Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're gonna break down what a ACL rehab session looks like about 12 weeks out from ACL surgery for an NFL athlete. I'm a physical therapist and I worked with Optimized Physical Therapy and Performance here in Las Vegas to film this training session. So we're gonna give you guys a full breakdown of what a training session looks like. I do wanna mention this video is for educational purposes only. We're gonna look at an ACL clinical practice guideline as well as an individual's training session, but this will vary a lot from individual to individual. So don't take this as medical advice. You should always consult a medical professional and a physical therapist before changing your rehab protocol. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so to start off, we're gonna be working with Jordan Jenkins here. He played four seasons with the Jets, one season down in Houston, and now he's in Las Vegas with the Raiders. His training session just started with a basic assault bike warm up here. This is just to get blood flowing, pretty casual, for about five minutes. From there, he moved into a single leg wall sit hold, just getting a little bit deeper knee bend in an isometric through that knee, just to again, start to warm up. This first part of the ACL rehab session involves a bit of testing and talking back and forth with the athlete. So he then went to the table and Jose, his physical therapist, is actually working on some soft tissue work with him here. This is twofold because this position is also a good position to measure knee effusion. Knee effusion or swelling is one criteria that we look at when we're looking at how and when an athlete can return to more intense activities like hopping. If we take a look at this clinical practice guideline, which I will have linked in the description below, you can see that at about 12 weeks is when we want our knee effusion to be one plus or less. We're not gonna get into the specifics of this, but basically this athlete's really doing well with this, not a lot of swelling, so he is progressing really well along this timeline. We're also looking at range of motion here. So getting the heel up onto a bolster allows us to actually look at knee extension and compare left to right knee. You can see that this range of motion is really good and he's pretty much near full extension with both knees. You can't see a huge difference here. So just a little bit of work on that passive extension range of motion here. And then he's gonna be good to go to spend most of the session focused on more intense activities like strength work and plyometric work. A few weeks earlier when range of motion was more of a priority and it wasn't full yet, you would see a lot more time spent on things like this supine passive extension range of motion exercise as well as other quad activation exercises and maybe a bit more soft tissue work. But again, we're kind of towards that late stage of rehab now. And he really only needs a few minutes on the table and most of the training session will actually be spent out in the gym and in the weight room. This is a good time to mention that everyone's rehab process will look different here and not every athlete will look like this at 12 weeks. Remember, he's an athlete that came into this really strong already and is an athlete who's training constantly and really focused on this as his full-time job so we don't wanna necessarily compare where a different athlete might be to his session. This is just to give you an idea and for educational purposes. So from there, he went out next to the gym and worked with a Kaiser machine on terminal knee extension. Now you may see these exercises done with a band as well, but this clinic does have a Kaiser machine which provides air resistance and it allows you to do the movements a little bit more quickly with more constant resistance. That said, I think you can get a very similar effect from doing these exercises with a band instead. There were a couple different things to work on here with terminal knee extension. One is actually regaining dynamic balance and being able to hold a single leg position. This takes time to build back up after surgery, so that is one factor here. Two, we're also looking for pain-free, full range of motion and good strength in that terminal knee extension position. So part of this is just about getting more and more resistance and being able to hold that knee extension position with a strong quad contraction more and more over time. And then three, we also wanna work on speed and the ability to control breaking the knee and decelerating and bending the knee. So that's another part of the variations of the drills that you can see here. This is really good practice for learning the mechanics of bending the knee, the quad contraction, but then we wanna to progress to a more loaded exercise, for example, like these heel taps, which come next. If we take a look back at our ACL clinical practice guideline and what we want to be seeing at about that 12 week mark, a good range to shoot for is about an eight inch step down for single leg heel taps for 20 heel taps in a row with good form. Because this athlete's already doing pretty well with this, good strength, we can actually start to load with weights as long as we're seeing what we want to see for those unweighted reps. So this athlete started with unweighted repetitions with some cueing for form, making sure that we're actually pushing that knee forward, loading that knee, that's the purpose of this exercise, we want to be doing that, but also maintaining control and balance. This athlete obviously does have really big strength goals to get back to, so we do want to add weight when the athlete can handle that. So you can see that this started out unweighted, but this athlete is progressing fairly quickly to being able to hold weight during this exercise. There are a lot of ways to progress this heel tap. You can go a little bit deeper up to an eight inch, 10 inch step, and then also by adding weight over time. 
One thing to keep an eye on is if swelling is changing throughout the rehab session with these exercises. In this athlete's case, there's not a lot of swelling change throughout the session. That's a really good sign that we can keep progressing in terms of volume and intensity of these exercises. Next, Jordan progressed to doing full walking lunges on the turf. This is a really great exercise to get the knee bending in full range of motion and to start loading the muscles. Part of rehab is really specific to how we want to load the quadriceps, how we want to gain a quadricep contraction, but part of it is also just building lower body strength back up. So getting back to heavy lunges in this late stage of rehab is a really good step towards getting back to full strength. Up next, Jordan began work on single leg plyometrics. These were done with assistance to decrease body weight and control that landing force. You can actually see a big difference between legs with this movement. So there's a lot that he needs to build back up. This is one of the first times he's doing this exercise. So you can see that dynamic balance is a factor, being able to control deceleration is a factor. And that's something that's gonna take multiple sessions and even multiple weeks to really build back up to. Over time though, this should get more and more symmetrical and he should be able to accept more and more load from week to week. You can see there's progressions and regressions to this type of movement. You can just work on snap downs or absorbing the force and being able to decelerate, or you can work on full jumps. It's good to see how it feels on the left leg versus the right leg and get those cues and progressions and regressions to make sure that each session you're making a little bit of progress towards regaining full symmetry and strength. He spent a fair bit of time on this exercise and variations of this with adequate rest between sets and then went back to the turf for some more open field work. A good starting point for some open field plyometrics is a single leg jump into a double leg landing. This can help you see weight shift from one side to the other and can help you again regain symmetry, coordination, and balance. He did a bit of a test between sides with single leg hopping and again you can see a big difference in motor control and distance in strength doing it with the right versus the left leg. Taking a look back at our ACL clinical practice guideline, you can see that there are three main areas for suggested interventions. One is therapeutic exercise and neuromuscular re-education. The second is agility and the third is plyometrics. So, so far we've covered some therapeutic exercise with some strength, some balance and motor control exercises, some plyometrics with single leg and double leg work. And then lastly, we need to introduce agility work. We're starting to do that with those single leg hops, but we also can work on things like just straight up acceleration and deceleration work with sprinting. Again, he's just now at around that 12 week point, so he's not gonna get into lateral change of direction yet, or lateral hopping, or cone drills and zigzags and all those things. That's probably gonna come a little bit closer to 14, 15, 16 weeks, and again, be progressive from week to week. In terms of this session and his stage, some things to work on were acceleration and also deceleration, not at 100%, at closer to 50 to 75% at most, and that deceleration is over a good number of steps. Ideally, you want to be able to decelerate from about 75% speed in about five steps, but you can see right now, he's probably doing that closer to like 10 or 12 steps. Over time though, as he gains good quad control to be able to absorb landing forces, better mechanics, better symmetry, you'll see that deceleration get better and better. The process of rehabbing after an ACL repair is a long and intense process. He's training five times a week or more inside the clinic and outside the clinic to support his training. And even at this three month mark, there are a lot of deficits that he still has to work on. This ACL rehab timeline does typically extend really far, nine months, a year and beyond before the athlete is really ready to return to full competition. Again, this will be different for everybody. All athletes are gonna have different levels of progress. Some of that that's within their control and how much they're putting into the sessions and their training, but also because of other factors like life stress, the type of surgery that you had, the natural healing timelines that vary between athletes, and again, a lot of other factors. I hope this is helpful to see if you are going through an ACL rehab progression yourself or if you're working with athletes who have gone through this. My biggest piece of advice is just to be progressive and to also be patient with the process. Big shout out to Jordan Jenkins and to Jose, his physical therapist, for letting me film the session and to Optimize for sharing the space and again letting me film this session to help you guys learn from it. If you guys do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos or follow-up videos and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.